Hey, once again, and many thanks for staying with us on the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. The government has so far handed out 100,000 Uganda shillings to um, part of the 500,000 people who are said to be receiving that money. That's only a small number because in Kampala here alone, we have some 157,000 plus beneficiaries of the same 100,000 Uganda shillings. Now, there have been some complaints from sections of the public as some individuals who are saying, I do not have a national ID. Hmm, how am I going to circumvent uh, this problem? But if, what if I told you I got my NIN number? Yes, in only three days, courtesy of the National Identification Registration Authority. And you could also do the same. Go to NIDA, have uh, yourself registered, your details and so forth, and you can get that NIN number in three days. Take it to the town clerk authorities and you'll be able to receive that money. But even though you don't have a national ID, you can still receive that money. Post Bank will be moving around with the van, giving out money, just like they were doing with the SAGE program as they distributed the 25,000 Uganda shillings. But, you're, but if you're near a NIDA center, yes, we have information for you, courtesy of the public relations officer, Gilbert Cadero. My good friend is here. Very good morning, sir. Good morning. It's been a while yeah, since sure, we last sure. interacted. Yes, it's been How a while. How is the branch in Makindi there? Uh, Makindi is My very My brother well, got a camera. You. Good, good. He's, He's doing really well. Good. He's doing fine. Thank so, you. Um, I did come there and I did get my NIN number in only three days. People cannot imagine that. Sure. But before we get into that, let's get into what NIRA does because the individuals who are watching this very this show in the morning mm -hmm. might not know what actually NIRA does, the National Identification Registration Authority. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just to refresh very quickly, uh, the National Identification and Registration Authority, mm -hmm. in short, NIRA, like uh, it's popularly referred to by the yes. public, mm -hmm. um, was established by an act of parliament uh, called the Registration of Persons Act. Mm. And the Registration of Persons Act came into force in March 2015. Yes. Uh, um, uh, now, uh, yeah, um, so the act mm. um, empowers the National Identification and Registration Authority mm. to register persons and issue them with national identification cards mm. and alien identification cards because we are supposed to register both nationals or Ugandan citizens but also legally resident non-Ugandans in the country. Uh, but aside from that, the mandate uh, is much bigger than national ID registration. But what exactly do you mean by legally resident Ugandans Legally the country? resident non-Ugandans. All right. Yes. Okay. So you have people who are um, foreigners yes. who are living, working gainfully in this country. Yeah. Um, they, they have residence permits, mm. valid residence permits issued through the Directorate of Citizenship mm. and Immigration Control. Mm. Those are supposed to also be registered and issued with alien I identification numbers mm. and alien IDs. So here, we here, have here. not yet started mm. that process but that is something that we are mandated oh, to Oh, you do. are just exploring yes. that fact because yes. I do have a friend of mine. She's called Lois mm -hmm. Ndio Mlejera. She is actually from Rwanda. She yeah. grew up here, was mm -hmm. born here, but she is around these refugees. The fact that her parents just came into this country when it became refugees the other side. Refugees so is a different yeah. matter. Refugees are registered mm -hmm. under the office of the prime minister. Alone. Alone. Yes. We are talking about people who are coming into the country yes for an extended period of time mm. uh, to work um, and uh, gainfully be yes. employed in mm. the country for an extended mm. period of time. Mm. You are Understood. mandated to, to register those and issue them with alien identification cards and alien identification numbers. Mm. It's a direction mm. we are going. Thank you for setting the um, record straight. Thank you too. Mm. Uh, the other bits of our mandate include uh, certification of adoption orders, All right. uh, registration of births, as well as registration of deaths. Mm. So our mandate is supposed to have uh, to, to cover an end-to-end -end system that captures a, person's ad, a person at the event of mm. their birth through the national ID registration system, stroke alien ID registration system, and exit at the point of death. So even the birth and death certificates will, for the refugees will go back to the LPM? No, no, no. The certificates, the events of birth and death, mm are registered by NIRA mm. and uh, certificates are issued mm. accordingly by Do NIRA. Do you charge for these birth certificates? For refugees, it's free mm. across the board. Mm. But for, for Ugandans, the standard fee is 5,000 mm. shillings plus bank charges because that money is payable to the mm. bank. 
uh, the money that is paid for such services goes directly to mm -hmm. the government consolidated All fund. Right. It so, dear Lois and any of the refugees who are watching Morning mm -hmm. at NTV at this beautiful opportune moment, you now know that the birth certificate is actually free of charge, but that death for certificate... For a refugee. For refugees, she's a refugee. Yes. Uh, you have to part with some 5,000 and some bank charges in yes. that regard. So that has been ironed out. Let's yes, continue sir. with our journey. Yes, so um, that is broadly our mandate mm. as it is. Uh, we commenced uh, full operations as NERA in uh, April, around about April 26, uh, 2016, right. yes, mm. uh, after the general elections. Mm. And uh, we've been uh, in operations since then. We work through 117 service centers across the country, mm -hmm. including five offices in the divisions of Kampala. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we know that uh, the registration of persons commenced slightly earlier than that. We had the mass registration exercise, mm -hmm. uh, phase one of which was in 2014, with a follow-through um, exercise that happened in uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is within that period that uh, the government considered that registration of persons should be a permanent process, mm. continuous and in perpetuity. Indeed. And so that led to the establishment of the agency called NIRA mm. to continue registering persons for uh, forever, for as, long as the, yes, mm. for, for as long as the country mm. still stands. So you still have people who think, ah, uh, the mass registration ended, so is registration still going mm -hmm. on? And we mm -hmm. keep saying yes. Mm -hmm. Registration is continuous and nearer. And it's in based as much on that background that, that, yeah. that and it's based on that background as to why we decided to take the initiative to look for Mr. Gilbert Kadiro so that we can get this information out there for the individuals who sure. need who need those need numbers within <laughs> the shortest time possible. Mm -hmm. So the government is saying the uh, individuals can get these need numbers within a week. And uh, we want to hear from you. Is that possible? Uh, we, are, we are working towards that on, uh, on a large scale. Mm. We are working towards shortening not mm. just NIN numbers, mm. but shortening the service turnaround time Indeed. across the board, uh, both for national IED but also for civil registration mm. services. Mm. Already for civil registration services like births and deaths, mm. where everything is in order, all the documentation is correct, mm. uh, fully verified, we are able to issue you with a birth certificate or a death certificate mm. within an hour or at most within 24 hours from the point of, mm -hmm. of application. Mm -hmm. Now, we are working to look at how do we shorten the turnaround time for national ID mm. registrations uh, from the point of submission of documentation mm -hmm. up to the point of uh, uh, one acquiring a NIN mm -hmm. and then getting their uh, national ID, the physical ID. Indeed. Uh, in the wider scheme of things, uh, globally, the NIN is the most important thing. Mm. Because even without the physical national ID, you could be identified, you could be identified mm. for as long as you have the NIN. Mm. So the first uh, point uh, of action or attention for us will be how do we get the NIN out as quickly mm. as possible for this person mm. or an, an applicant to be able to begin accessing services. You're aware that right now a lot of services, both in government and private sector, are tied to the national uh, identification Even number. Problems, yes, many of them. Absolutely. Mm. You cannot it, it, join the it, youth it, livelihood fund without it. It's only yes. going to get bigger and bigger. Mm. What we are seeing now is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, people were like, maybe mm, as we move forward, the government will relax this recommendation of the national ID. No. But as we go forward, you can really see that it's, no, it's it what is, is warranted. It is going to be enforced. Uh, it's only going to get tighter and tighter. And so we would like to encourage um, everybody who has not yet registered mm. to go and do so. The beauty of it all is that uh, as we speak, mm. we have made significant strides. Mm. Um, out of the eligible population that, is, um, uh, that, that should be uh, holding national IDs... Let's look at the adult population of 21 million. We've mm. moved quite significantly. To how many? As, as we speak, we have issued... Um, both new IDs, replacements, rectifications, well over 18 million mm -hmm. of, of those have been printed uh, and either issued or are with us mm -hmm. in our different service centers awaiting issuance mm -hmm. uh, to their owners as and when they come to, mm -hmm. to collect them. So um, uh, if you look at the population age 16 and above that is eligible for mm -hmm. national IDs, mm -hmm. uh, 
coming to 20, slightly over 21 million, mm -hmm. we are well within the, the <coughs> range mm -hmm. um, uh, of, of hitting our target uh, in the nearest uh, possible future. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are looking within this particular period of the lockdown, uh, the lockdown to see how we can continue to offer mm -hmm. services. Given that now it is a requirement for one to access the COVID, the COVID, fund. Uh, the COVID <laughs> fund uh, and other services, even <coughs> during the lockdown period, what we have devised as a strategy uh, is a mobile approach. We are looking to engage uh, the LC level uh, people, LC1, and in that we are thinking we could give the LC1 chairpersons in each village a certain number of forms say 20 enrollment forms and then they are able to either identify and contact persons who have not yet registered or persons who have not yet registered can go directly to the LCs, pick the forms, fill them, attach all the necessary documentation, have them verified. Um, the LC will carry these forms uh, to the parish uh, internal security officer or Gombolola internal security officer. We've moved, we are, we are moving lower from the district internal security mm. officer to get services closer to the people. Mm. And then the LC chairperson takes these forms, has them verified by the, uh, the, the parish or the Gombolola internal security, uh, of, uh, internal security officer. And then the applicant can then submit these forms to us for, for processing. In all this, we are trying to align ourselves with the government um, parish development mm. pro, uh, model mm. the, of, develop, of uh, service delivery that is being rolled out. And we expect at the local the, level. Yes, at the local mm. level. And we think that this will make it easier for the public to access mm -hmm. our services and have themselves registered, get their national uh, identification numbers and subsequently national IDs in order for them then to be able to access uh, services accordingly. We, uh, in as much as um, we are not under full operation as mm. we speak, mm. we are working behind the scenes, one, to process data that was already with us right before mm. the lockdown. There are teams on the ground that are working very hard to have that data processed and the NIMS out and the national IDs produced for for, for people. Mm. Uh, we have cases of people maybe who had challenges with their applications, mm. missing documentation and so on. Those are also being attended to mm. during this period when we are, uh, we, uh, we are not under full operation. Mm. So we have not gone to sleep. There are strategic Indeed. areas where we are paying attention to ensure that those who need the mm. services get registered, get their national identification numbers and use those, uh, that information purposes what of is gilbert what is the fate of those individuals who have since left the urban areas that we are targeting individuals who were in kampala at some point and decided to leave kampala without their national ids or they didn't have them before they left so they are in gulu somewhere they are in arua somewhere they are in Lira somewhere what advice do you give them if they want to get registered right now our offices are currently integrated we've integrated a lot of our offices mm. onto our central server at mm. kololo so um, a client can contact any of our NERA offices. Unfortunately, mm. right now, we, we, we don't have interface with the public. Mm. But we have made uh, provision, online provision, for persons to track the status of their applications, but also to check for their national identification numbers. You can do so on your phone, wherever you are. Mm. For as long as you have, for instance, your... Uh, your reference number or a tracking number that mm. was given to you mm. on your form when you, you, you submitted your application. You use that and you're able to retrieve your mm. national identification mm -hmm. number wherever you are for as long as you're able to use your, mm. your, your, your phone mm. to get onto our website. Registration of uh, the national ID, registration for the same, is it free of charge? First registration for national ID mm. is free of charge. Mm. So if you have not registered yet and you need to do so, it is free of charge. Mm. It is only subsequent uh, transactions on the national ID that require payment. Say mm. you have lost your national ID, 
then you pay a fee. Mm -hmm. That fee is 50,000 shillings. It's a fee established mm -hmm. in law, plus bank charges, it will come to about uh, 52,500 mm -hmm. shillings. That's the standard fee. Mm -hmm. If you want to change particulars or so add or so remove information on your national ID, that's also 50,000 mm -hmm. shillings. Mm -hmm. It's a standard fee payable to the bank, plus bank charges, 52,000 52, something or thereabouts. And you're able to mm -hmm. uh, make the necessary change or to replace your national ID as the case may be. Mm. But first registration for national ID is free of charge. Let's talk about feasibility of actually attaining these national IDs in time for the beneficiaries to receive uh, your, their money. Uh, don't you think the current realities that are compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown itself, the 42-day lockdown, where many of the members of the public are curtailed to move from one point to another, don't you think such factors put together might make it unfeasible for what we are talking about right now, attainment of a national ID within a week or even a nil? Um because you're going to the LC1, yes, you give them 20 forms yes, at each yes. level, see, we, then we, they have to approve, you, that is time that is being elapsed. Absolutely. Mm. You know, you one, I mentioned that national ID registration mm. has never stopped. Mm. And it's not going to stop. Every day there are new applications mm. coming in. I think we need to move from this presumption mm. that uh, everybody who's going to register for a national ID mm. in this period of time is doing so necessarily because mm. they are trying to get access to the, uh, to the, to the uh, 100,000 shillings yes. that mm. is being doled out. Mm. There are people who need this ID for so other many reasons. other services. Mm. But um, what, what, what I can say uh, with, uh, without any uh, doubt mm. is that for as long as you already have a national identification number in this period, mm. you can be verified if you are in that category mm -hmm. that you is can. targeted mm -hmm. to be uh, uh, allocated the 100,000 shillings. We have an interface with the Ministry of Local Government. We've already been doing mm. uh, verification mm -hmm. of uh, beneficiaries mm. under the SAGE program. So it is nothing new for us to move and do the verification mm. of persons uh, which already is happening anyway because mm. the majority of those 63,000 or so who have received their, their, their payment mm. through the mobile money system have been verified mm. uh, by NERA. Their information has been verified Indeed. by NERA, yes. Mm. So I it, is, it is not something that is new to us. Mm. We've already had practice with this. Indeed. We do it every day with the uh, telecoms. Uh, and even as I speak, the um, third-party interface is live. There's a team there that is ensuring that that API is up and running mm. and person's information can be verified. Mm. So those that are already in the system with us, they have their names, they have their national IDs, we are able to, to verify. All right, let's draw some contrast to get some variations on how you are doing um, during the COVID-19 uh, period and also before. What are some of those factors that stored the registration process before the pandemic? I don't think there was anything that stalled the registration process before the pandemic. And that's why we had to call Bef for a continuous Bef process. Yes. It was no, for no, a reason. No. Uh, no. Um, I, I, more I, people I, had not been covered and we needed to cover more people, I, so we made it a continuous process. What are some of the factors that made it a slow process at the start that we had to make it a continuous process? Because they had a deadline at first. Then they realized the deadline cannot actually cover everyone. So the idea was let's make it a continuous process. What are the underlying factors before the pandemic? If I understand, uh, mm. we need to move away from the pandemic. Mm. We said registration of persons started way back mm. with the mass registration mm. exercise in 2014. Mm. Now, the reasoning behind the establishment of a national agency mm. to conduct registration of persons in perpetuity mm. is in keeping with global standards. Mm. Globally, you have countries that are able to identify they are citizens mm. that are able to identify non-citizens but who are within their uh, geography. I'll give you one factor as to why so many people are not yes. clamoring for it uh, based on the rumors that we were hearing according to the investigations. Many people say this is a chance for government to spy on us or even track us using these national IDs. So that fewer people actually clamored for these IDs in the beginning. So I'm talking about such factors that made it yeah, uh, that, a slow process. That was then. Mm. That was then. Mm. But I think uh, post-2016, mm. a lot of things have changed. Indeed. The realities became clearer. Indeed. 
people began to understand that this national ID, uh, despite the rumors that were circulating mm. around the initial mass registration Indeed. exercise, yes. uh, was, was actually a game changer mm. for this country in many ways, Indeed. at an individual level, but level. also a security level, mm. at a national level, mm. strategic level. And you. so since then, the attitude is much different. Mm -hmm. You don't hear any more rumors about, say, government is using the ID to spy on mm. us. Nobody is spying mm. on anybody. We have protocols within the law that are provided for regarding access and use Super of information, yes. right? So nobody goes in there, picks information as and when they want. Mm -hmm. If you want to interface and use the database mm -hmm. of NERA yes. for your service delivery, whether in public service or in private sector, you have to engage us in a discussion. Indeed. We sign protocols, right, memorandums of understanding, detailing what you are able to see, how many times you're able to see it, what sort of detail you mm. can access. Indeed. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. Yes. The telecoms will come and get specific sets of, of, of information. The banks will come, they will get specific sets of information. Right. Minister of local government will come, they need specific information. Mm. Electoral commission comes, they need specific information. All that is documented mm. in the law. You go outside of that, you are held responsible for misuse mm -hmm. of person's data. So there's, there's no, no such rumor mm. anymore. And I think there's a lot more confidence in the Indeed. public. Yes. And actually a yearning for this uh, document, Indeed. a yearning for the need that Indeed. we need it. Because so we can fast we forward to 2021, we are still grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic. So many challenges persist, one of them being mobility issues. You are working under a scaled down workforce Absolutely. and so forth. And uh, we would like to know what are some of the challenges you've encountered during your resolve to actually ensure that all the citizenry is registered during this pandemic? <clears throat> Uh, one, the the strategy I outlined mm. of doing the mobile village yes, level yes. Uh, registration mm. is something that we had thought about uh, rolling out at the commencement of the mm. of the lockdown. Mm. But of course, we had to subject this to 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 discussion mm. uh, with the other arms of government uh, because of the SOPs and observance of of, of the guidelines mm. uh, around the lockdown. Uh, how are people going to move? Mm. Uh, public transport is frozen, so they cannot get to our offices. Indeed. Our offices, uh, we, we, we are supposed to be working at 10% staffing levels. Um, mm. Are we able to, to meet the public demand? Indeed. So all these needed to be discussed. And so there was a slight lull in, in uh, us being able to roll out this strategy. I but I think at this point in time, we are saying we should be good to go. Of course, you this. are good to go yes. in the wake of a 12% tax on our data. Don't you think you might be unable to reach out to some of the people you are trying to target um, because of the there are two options. of the internet? There are two options. Mm. As NERA, we know that uh, we, we work with stakeholders mm. who are both digital and Indeed. analog. Indeed. A big number of people in this country still do face-to-face, uh, -face, right? They still want to walk to a service center mm -hmm. because they don't have access to the smartphones, Indeed. they don't have the data, they don't have good internet connect connectivity, mm -hmm. etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So those we are providing for, and that's where we, we take care of them through the provision of forms to the LCs. So they can go to the LC, mm -hmm. you don't need public transport for that. Uh, you can walk to your uh, local ch council chairperson, pick your form, put your documents together mm. and prepare them for submission. Mm. If you're able to, then you should soon be able to upload your information on data, okay. uh, on online rather. Mm. But for those that are able to afford the data and get services uh, online, they should be able to, to, to go online, Indeed. verify the status of their applications, submit their documentation mm. for, for, for processing online and so on and so Very on. Very insightful yeah. conversation I'm having with Mr. Gilbert Kadiro, the public relations officer working with NIRA. Yes, the National Identification Registration Authority. Now, help us demystify this rumor. It has been circulating in this country mm -hmm. for a while before the pandemic and after even now. You have individuals who are saying that uh, NIRA is charging between 200,000 to 300,000 for those new uh, uh, people who are registering for their IDs trying to get their name numbers. Is this true? We, I have stated here on the record mm. that fast registrations for national IDs are free. For anybody. Mm. No one should charge an applicant 
for registration please for sharpen your ID ears this is important for first mm. registration it is free of charge free of charge all right subsequent register uh, subsequent actions or transactions mm. on your on your national id ie you've lost your id it is damaged you sat badly on it in the, you mm. kept it in your wallet it broke or cracked mm. and so it's not functional anymore you want to change particulars on your mm. id id I.e. Uh, I. change your name, um, add a name, drop this, move that. Mm. Those attract a fee. All right. And that fee is 50,000 shillings. It's established in law, payable to the bank. With bank charges, it is t uh, about 52,000 500 shillings. Thank you for demystifying that rumor because it has been tarnishing uh, the image of the National Identification Registration Authority. Of course, Yet then you we shall call upon doing the, great we, work. we shall call upon the public. Indeed. Anybody mm. who has any such experiences mm. should bring the matter to the mm. attention of the authorities, either police mm. or the management mm. at NIRA, and we shall take it up from there. I like that. Now, if I want a national ID, yes, and I'm coming to NIRA, what should I come with? The requirements okay um uh, one you need to fill the uh, enrollment form yes two you'll need to um, attach mm. uh, a letter of introduction yes uh, from your area lc1 mm. chair person uh, endorsed or mm. countersigned by the uh, parish isochi a person mm. or the gombolola is a person or the district is a person Three, you'll need to have a copy of at least one of your biological parents' IDs. Basic All right. requirements. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Gilbert Cadillo. When shall I receive my national ID? Registered uh, last month. So <laughs> but I have the NIN number. You have the NIN number. <laughs> after you can, the, uh, after you the lockdown. Transact. Yes, after the lockdown. All right. Beautiful, beautiful and insightful conversation right here, courtesy of Gilbert Cadillo, the public relations officer at the National Identification Registration Agency. It is free of charge. Yes, maybe 50,000 if you lost your ID. On the ground.